Today, we're diving into, the world of one of the most brilliant minds of the 20th century. Bertrand Russell Bertrand Russell was more than just a mathematician, he was a pioneer, a philosopher, and a rebel thinker, who dared to challenge the very foundations of logic itself. During a long, productive, and often turbulent life, he published more than 70 books and about 2,000 articles, married four times, became involved in innumerable public controversies, and was honored and reviled in almost equal measure throughout the world. Born into the aristocracy on May 18, 1872, in Monmouthshire, England, Bertrand Russell was destined for greatness from the start. However, young Bertrand's life took a tragic turn, when both his parents passed away by the age of three, leaving him and his siblings under the care of their grandparents. Bertrand received his education through private tutoring at home, and he later deeply regretted the fact that, his childhood was largely spent in isolation from other children. He was really smart from a young age, and got really interested in math early on. Learning Euclidean geometry at 11, was like love at first sight for him, because it showed him how he could know things for sure, and prove them. This made him think that, maybe all knowledge could have really strong bases like that, which became a big part of why he wanted to study philosophy. He started thinking about these things when he was young, and wrote about his doubts about Christianity, which he was taught by his grandmother, when he was a teenager. In 1890, Russell's time alone ended when he went to Trinity College, University of Cambridge, to study math. He joined a special group called, The Apostles, where he made friends for life with some really important philosophers. Talking with them made him switch from math to philosophy. He even got a scholarship at Trinity, because of a thesis he wrote called, An Essay on the Foundations of Geometry, which he later turned into his first philosophy book in 1897. In 1896, Russell released his first political book, German Social Democracy. While he supported the goals of the German socialist movement to make changes, he also pointed out some sharp and forward-thinking criticisms of Marxist beliefs. However, during this period, he was more influenced by a group of German mathematicians like Karl Weierstrass, Georg Cantor, and Richard Dedekind. They were focused on making mathematics more logically sound. Russell saw their achievements as not only important for math, but also for philosophy. He even called it, the greatest triumph of which our age has to boast. Inspired by the brilliant mathematicians he admired, Russell had a groundbreaking idea, to show that mathematics wasn't just rigorous, but was actually a form of logic itself. He laid out this philosophical argument, later called logicism, in his book, The Principles of Mathematics. Russell argued that, all of math could be traced back to a few basic rules, that were purely logical, without needing specific math concepts like numbers or square roots. Towards the end of writing this book, Russell realized that a German mathematician named, Gottlob Frege, had already explored similar ideas in his book, The Foundations of Arithmetic. Russell acknowledged Frege's work, and discussed the differences in their views on logic, in an appendix to his own book. As Russell delved deeper into the realm of logic, he encountered a profound challenge to his belief in its supreme importance. This retreat began with his discovery of a contradiction, now famously known as Russell's paradox, which struck at the very core of the logical system he hoped would underpin all of mathematics. The paradox stemmed from a seemingly innocent question, can we construct a class that contains all classes not containing themselves? However, 
Attempting to answer this question leads to a contradiction. If the class contains itself, then it doesn't, and if it doesn't contain itself, then it does. This paradox is akin to the conundrum of defining the village barber as, the man who shaves all those who do not shave themselves, and then questioning whether the barber shaves himself or not. At first, Russell thought the paradox was not a big deal. But the more he thought about it, the more serious it seemed. Eventually, he realized there was a big problem with the idea of class as he had understood it before. When Russell told Frege about the paradox, Frege said, arithmetic is in trouble. The foundation they wanted to use for math seemed to be broken. While Frege got really sad about this, Russell tried to fix it by making a logic theory that didn't have the paradox. But every time he thought he fixed it, the paradox came back in a different way, like a stubborn sickness that won't go away. As Russell tried to solve the paradox, he changed his whole way of thinking about logic. He kept adding new ideas to his theory to fix it. But in doing so, he had to give up some important parts of his old way of thinking. He decided that classes and propositions didn't really exist, and that logic wasn't about studying them. Instead, he came up with a really complicated theory called, the ramified theory of types. This new theory avoided problems like Russell's paradox, but it was incredibly hard to understand. When Russell and his friend Alfred North Whitehead finished writing their three-volume book, Principia Mathematica, The Theory of Types, and other changes made the logic system too complicated. Not many people, whether they were philosophers or mathematicians, have been able to fully understand this massive work. Still, it's considered one of the greatest intellectual achievements of the 20th century. Principia Mathematica was a massive effort to show mathematically what the principles of mathematics had argued philosophically that math is just a part of logic. The individual proofs in its three volumes are usually accepted as correct, but whether the whole work really proves that math is logic is still debated. To say math is logic, you have to believe that the theory of types is a logical truth, but many doubt this. Plus, Kurt Gödel's first incompleteness theorem showed that, no single logical theory can explain all of math, every consistent theory of arithmetic will always have gaps. Still, Principia Mathematica, isn't considered a failure. It's had a huge impact on how we study math and think about the philosophy of math. During World War I, Russell worked hard to stop the war, and to speak against forcing people to join the army. The government didn't like this, and thought he was causing trouble. He had to go to court twice, and was sent to prison for six months after the war ended. In 1916, because he was against the war, he lost his job as a teacher at Trinity College. Trinity offered him his job back later, but he decided not to go back. Instead, he started writing as a journalist, and on his own. In 1952, Russell got married for the fourth time to Edith Finch. He was 80 years old, and this time, he found happiness in his marriage. In his final years, Russell focused on fighting against nuclear weapons, and the Vietnam War. He became like a thorn in the side of the powerful people, always challenging them. Even when he was very old, he joined protests, and encouraged young people to stand up against injustice with his powerful words. People were amazed to see him still fighting for what he believed in, and they admired him even more. In 1961, when he was 89 years old, 
the British courts did something unusual, they sent him to prison again. Bertrand Russell passed away on February 2, 1970, at the age of 97. He died of influenza, which led to pneumonia. When he died, Russell was far better known as an anti-war campaigner than as a philosopher of mathematics. In retrospect, however, it is possible to see that, it is for his great contributions to philosophy that, he will be remembered, and honored by future generations.